This video is going to be about wall climb, the basic uh, setup for wall climb, right? Uh, in most organizations, so the basic idea of wall climb is the dog's uh, at a line of departure, usually about 15, 10, 15 feet away from the wall. Uh, in most organizations, the toy is marked on a certain height. The dog runs up, grabs the toy, you catch the dog. If you have a verbal out, that's awesome. If you don't, they just break, stick it out of their head. Uh, and then it's whatever dog goes the highest wins. If your dog wants to make one run and catch it, he has the best score for the day, he only has to make one run. Um, there's no minimum amount of runs, there's no maximum amount of runs. You can restrain the dog into the ring, you can restrain the dog at the line of departure, you can break stick him out, and you can water ski him back off the, off the, uh, the run, right? Uh, in our organization, the, the concept of wall climb, there is a tug toy on a pulley that gets put up the wall. Uh, the height is marked, the dog runs up, grabs the toy, we record the height. If it's a successful jump, we record the height. The highest height wins the competition, right? The concept of run the wall for the height of the toy, totally the same. The control parameters around uh, the event are the thing that is, that is different uh, for, organ for, for GRC as an organization. So first things first, uh, we'll talk about how you get set up. So when you register for the competition, you'll have your uh, scorecard that will be made up by the, uh, uh, the administrator of the, of the competition. Uh, it will mark your starting height. So you're going to say, I want to start my dog at four feet or five feet or eight feet or whatever. You can set it as low or as high as you want, but that's where you start. The height of the toy will continually go up and up and up until no dogs are left, but the toy will never go back down unless we're making a courtesy uh, uh, run. So like if your dog misses three times in a row, you don't want to take them off the field with that miss. The, the last time you can ask for a courtesy, I'll, as you pull your dog back to the line, I'll drop it a little bit and they get a win. So, but that's not... That's a, that's a courtesy uh, run, that's a courtesy run for your dog's mental health. That is not the competition. In the competition, the toy never goes down. You can't go six feet, and then four feet, and then three feet, and then eight feet, and then five feet. It doesn't go like that. It goes up and up and up and up and up until we run out of dogs. So you set, uh, your scorecard will say your starting height. That's where your dog starts at. We'll make a run order based on the starting height. You get told you're on deck, then you get told you're up. Your dog makes the run. They have three chances in that run. So if you say six foot, you put your dog on the line, they run, they miss, you can take them back to the line. They run, they miss, strike two, they come back to the line, they run, they get it, that, that height gets recorded for you. If they miss three times, that's a foul and it's done. At level one, we allow one foul. So they can miss one height, we're good to go. They allow one foul. Uh, level two and three, no. If, they, if you miss it, you miss it, you're done for the day, that's it. Uh, level one in all of the sports, we allow one foul. Because people, it's a learning curve. People are learning the sport, they're new to it. Um, so after you get done with your run, you, before you leave the ring, you tell the table, the scoring table, what your next height is. So if I did five foot run, I leave, the, my dog catches it, I walk out of the ring, I stop at the table on the way out, and I go put me in at six feet. And they write me down at six feet, and they put my card back in the run order so we know who's on deck, who's up, things like that. If you want to change the height, for some reason you realize your dog's a little tired or your dog's looking really good and you want to raise or lower the height, you can always go back to the table and say, put me in at seven, and they'll take your card and move it from six to seven, or move it from six back down to five, as long as that height has not passed. So if we're at six feet on the wall, and you said you were going to go in at eight and you change your mind and you want to go in at six and a half, you can put it back down, but you can't go below six. So the way the, the, the height of the toy never gets to go down. In the run, it's only up and up and up. So if you're going to make a change, make a change before you miss the height that you want, right? But you declare your starting height when you sign up. You declare the height of your next run when you leave the ring. And if you want to change it after the fact, that's fine. But you know, if you want to change it after the fact, that's fine. But you, you have to be aware of where the toy is. You can't set it below the toy. Only where it is or up. That's it. So that's the basic parameter of the thing. That's how you. That's how you set the heights. You declare your heights when you're going. As far as the control parameters, uh, it goes like this: in level one, 
you have loose leash responsibility from the entrance of the ring to the line of the departure. The line of departure is 15 feet from where the wall will be. There will be a run, like you'll see like a carpet run or a turf run or whatever. There will be markings if it's a grass pathway, but there's going to be a run that leads up to the wall. The line of departure is 15 feet away from the wall. So when you walk in the ring entrance until you get to the line of departure, you're under loose leash responsibility which means if your dog pulls for more than nine seconds, you foul. If the dog pulls you off balance or you have to stabilize against the dog, you fail. So the SR standards for disqualification for least pressure, that counts from the line of departure to the ring. Now, you have a couple of ways that you can get around that. <laughs> you have a couple of ways that you can get around that. If you have a small dog and you wanna carry the dog to the line of departure, cool, cool beans. It's loose leash, right? There's no fighting with the dog on the leash. That's the point. If you want to go quickly, so if you want to move, if you want to book it from the line, from the entrance to the line of departure, totally up to you, right? If you want to tell your dog heel and then you walk in a heel to the line of departure, absolutely fine. This is not the SR. This is a drive event. So in the SR, there's some real strict standards about help. In a drive event, we just got to make sure that they are under control. It's not the same level of, uh, of control parameters. You're not going to get minute dings for a little score, for a little obedience differentials. It's not going to be like that. There's just loose leash responsibility from the, lot, from the entrance to the line of departure. However you manage that, whether it's going fast enough there, not tight, carrying the dog, or putting the dog in a position as you walk to the ring, or tactical heel as you walk to the ring, it's no problem. But your leash can be tight for more than nine seconds and you can't be off balanced. Once you get to the line of departure, you may at level one restrain your dog. You can hold their chest or if you have them in a harness, you can hold their harness. I can't disallow people from holding the collar to agitate. I can't, man, I can't tell you what to do. I say you can restrain your dog. I will personally say that I do not think it's smart to teach your dog to agitate while you hold the collar and then ever in your life expect to be able to grab your dog's collar and ask them to not agitate. So for me personally, agitate on a harness where I hold their chest, like I'll hold under their arms, I'll hold over their shoulders like this, I'll hold their hips and we can go like, oh man, I'm gonna go when I'm holding those positions because I'm never gonna do those positions in an emergency. I'm never gonna hold my dog's hips and like pull them back and let them start and pull them. I'm not gonna do that. If I ever grab my dog's collar in the real world, I don't want them to go, yes, now I agitate. I want them to calm down, right? So for me, the collar is our cooperation device. Harness and chest and body holds are our like getting up device. But when you get to the line of departure, the loose leash responsibility is gone at level one. You can hold and restrain the dog until it's time to make the run. So I hold and restrain the dog, I look at the judge, the judge will tell me whenever you're ready. The height should already be set because I didn't have to tell anybody because they, they knew based on my card. I let the dog go, I run behind him, dog jumps the wall, I catch the dog, right? Catch the dog, the judge is gonna give me 10 to 15 seconds, 15 seconds is the limit. He's gonna give me up to 15 seconds to play with my dog and make a nice little reward event because I don't wanna just catch the toy and fuck you and out the dog. So he's gonna give me up to 10 or 15 seconds to play, 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 play. Then he's gonna ask me to out the dog. I'm gonna out the dog, right? So I go out, just like spring pole. I have out, chance one, five, four, three, two, one. That's a fail. I get two more tries, three strikes and you're out. Like out, five, four, three, two, one. Out, five, four, three, two. Oh, he spit it out, so we're good. I mean, that's. Shit standards, you should want better than that, but that's what you have to get away with on the day of competition. I get uh, one word, five seconds, that counts as a try. If you try three times and your dog fails to out, you out. If the dog outs successfully, once the dog outs successfully, we are back to loose leash responsibility to exit the ring. So I go out, I take the toy away, I'll hand the referee the toy, hand the judge the toy, and then I'm gonna exit the ring. Loose leash responsibility applies. So that means whatever your strategy is, if I've got to leave and I'm dragging my dog, then that is a foul. That means that run does not count. That is a foul, right? We're done. 
I can go heal or in and flip the dog into tactical heal, and I can tactical or regular heal him out of the ring and avoid loose leash irritation altogether. You pick your dog up, carry him out the ring, I don't care. But you and your dog do not fight on the leash in my presence. Like, that's the rule of GRC. You and your dog do not fight on the leash. Like, there's no disagreement on leash. However you got to avoid that is your business, but no disagreeing with your dog on leash. They should be trained, right? So that is uh, level one, right? That's how level one works. Level two works like this. The same entrance, same loose leash from entrance to line of departure exists, only at the line of departure, you are now not allowed to restrain your dog. When you get to the line of departure, you call middle, the dog goes to middle, however, doesn't matter, but they must go to middle without physical positioning. They've got to cooperatively go to middle themselves. You take your leash off the dog if you have one on. If there's a long line, we must attach the long line to the collar. If it's not an enclosed space, if it's a fully actually enclosed competition area, off leash. So I take my leash off, I hook my leash up, my dog is in the middle position cooperatively, and from there I release on a verbal. So it's the same picture of middle release, you run behind them and catch them, same picture, only now instead of you restraining them, they show control by staying in one spot. Right, that's level two. Again, same thing. They catch the toy, blah, 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 you get 10, 15 seconds to play, the judge is gonna tell you to out the dog, you out the dog, hand the toy back to the judge, we exit the ring under loose leash responsibility. That's level two. Level three is at the ring entrance. I flip my dog to middle, take the leash off, put the leash on me, right? I tactical heel required, not loose leash, not carry, tactical heel the dog from the ring entrance to the line of departure. At the line of departure, down, down your dog, leave your dog at the line of departure, go to the wall, get ready to catch, release from the wall, the dog's in a down release from the wall, right? And again, when it's time to leave, you go out, flip your dog to middle, hand the toy back to the judge, and tactical heel out of the ring together. I put my leash on him at the ring entrance and exit. That's how that works. So level two is a little harder, level three is a little harder still. But that is the idea uh, in wall climb. The basic concept of going up the wall is no problem. The other thing that's different about our organization is that there are three run must. It's a three run must. So. That means you have to have three unfouled runs to qualify. Even if your dog has the highest height, yeah, like by far has the highest height of the competition, if he fails to out that run, he's made two successful runs, his third run he makes the highest jump, and he fails to out, that fouls out. If he fouls out, even if his second run was still the highest run of the day, He's not getting on the podium because he didn't make three unfouled runs. They must make three successful runs. I don't care about the height. They can make one run at three foot, one run at four foot, and then another run at 15 foot, whatever. But you must make three successful runs in order to qualify and get on the podium. It's the same thing in every sport except spring pool. You have to make three successful pulls and weight pull. You have to make three successful runs on treadmill. It is showing that what you did was not a fluke that level of cooperation was not an accident, it was not a fluke, your dog does it. And it's also a bit of a test of the gameness because coming out for multiple attempts takes endurance and commitment. A lot of dogs look like superstars on the first two runs and the third one they shit the bed. So it's training for endurance and gameness and, and, and determination and perseverance. So that's wall climb, the declaration of height, the ring entrance to the line of, respon to the line of departure responsibility in level one, two, and three and uh, how everything works as far as the height, the raising, and lowering. I think that's it. All right, that's wall climb 101.